As soon as we read in the news that there was a cluster of unexplained pneumonia, a group of us started entering in individual level data around the outbreak. We didn't necessarily anticipate in early January that this was going to become a pandemic. There are 20 to 30 individuals who are working as volunteers as a part of this project. We have people all over the globe because our goal is to capture information from the original sources. And so we need people who are fluent in all of the languages where there are COVID cases. As you can imagine, early on when we were getting all of this figured out, we were kind of attached at the hip, calling each other cell phones pretty much every hour. That, of course, isn't sustainable. Uh, we quickly moved over to Slack. We have specific channels around different tasks, and uh, it really is being operated now like the large-scale project that it has become. The biggest trend that we've seen with the COVID-19 outbreak is that it has spread all over the globe. And that's certainly not anything that you need a map to see anymore because we all see it in our own daily lives. What we've seen that works is a combination of testing and case isolation in order to bring down the number of COVID-19 cases. And this has happened in South Korea, Taiwan, China, Singapore, Hong Kong. It's what's being attempted in Italy. To put this in context, South Korea is able to test on average around 15,000 people a day, surging well above that number. South Korea is about seven times smaller than the US. And so we need to be running hundreds of thousands of tests a day across the United States in order to expect that something like the South Korea approach to testing and isolation is going to work. The federal government in the United States has certainly been woefully slow to act. The fact that we cannot run enough tests in the United States right now is an example of the slow, intentional response at the federal level to try and obfuscate what was going on with respect to this outbreak. And we're paying that cost right now. There's no longer a country that the U.S. most mirrors because we have claimed the top spot in terms of growth rate and speed to the highest number of cases. A couple of weeks ago, we were on the trajectory that Italy was on in terms of the growth rate of cases, in terms of the explosion geographically in the number of individuals that are infected with COVID-19 in terms of the risk to the healthcare systems. Uh, we've now surpassed Italy in terms of those metrics. So I think, unfortunately, there's nobody to look ahead to anymore because we are writing a new story about how severe this outbreak can become.